And we're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey. This is Wednesday Encounters. I'm your host, Carrie. With me, as always, producer, co-host, Miss Daniela. How are you, dear? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, How it's uh, Linda. Linda's good. Her mom is good, and really appreciate all the well wishes and the prayers, and uh, you know, all the positive affirmations. It's been it's been great, but everyone's doing much better. Linda goes back to work tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So. She's, uh, I think it's 10 days out that she has to wait, but yeah, everything is good. Uh, got a good show plan. Before we do that, I want to remind everyone to keep it clean for us in the chat. We appreciate that. And, uh, you know, Daniela's doing something that is just absolutely incredible. I think, uh, tomorrow night from five to seven, she's having on hidden existence It's called the encounter hub. And what it's for is for people that have had experiences or encounters that don't want to come on camera, but still want to talk about it with people. So uh, you can find it in the community tab for Hidden Existence. So go to Daniela's channel, Hidden Existence, if you want to be a part of that. And uh, they'll find a the link there, right? Like, well, they'll have to email me for a link. And like I say, it won't be live. It's not for a show. It's for those people who don't want to be on YouTube, don't want right. to uh, but go public with it. They can come and meet in a private space. Uh, with other people who've had encounters and it might be a bit of therapy for them could be interesting there's a few people going already so uh awesome. yeah check out my community tab and the details are there that's absolutely awesome uh that that you're doing that because i mean we're here to help we say we're here to help that's what we're here to do is uh, whatever time we have and and it's it's when I say we that's what i mean it's not just me it's and daniela taking time to do this on her own channel uh, are, are under her own StreamYard anyway. It'll be StreamYard, but it won't be recorded or broadcast or anything. It's just a place everyone can get together and uh, and talk about their experiences without going public. So uh, very good, very good. All right, real quick, remind everyone, check out links in the description for My Patriot Supply. Get your emergency food supply. These days, you just don't know. You might need one. You know, we've had we've been affiliated with them for a couple of years, and we never really pushed it. But I really think it's something people need. Uh, you can just go to My Patriot Supply, and they have all kind of deals there. But if you use our special website, preparewithbigfoot.com, you can get deals that they've put in there for us, and we get like two and a half or three percent of that. Um, but I tell you what, if you really want to help the channel and help us out, the best thing you can do is comment. And uh, I think after you hear this show, you're really going to have something to comment about. So we appreciate that very much. You can hit that thumbs up. That helps. But if you leave a comment, it kind of gets pushed out there for more people. So our guest tonight, Fred, is coming to us from Alaska. And uh, I talked to him yesterday or a couple days ago, I think, for, uh, for about 45 minutes. And it was uh, just an incredible experience and encounter. I would call it an encounter for sure, but definitely a... Uh, a terrifying experience and so fred uh you grew up knowing what these things were right oh yeah definitely i mean we were taught at a young age always make sure you don't keep your back to the woods you don't want the hairy man to get you and you know you you kind of take it as a joke as a kid until one's screaming at you from the tree line or you know throwing rocks from the bluff it kind of all that doubt goes out the window and th this is formative years so it's not i mean it having experiences over my lifespan it, it when this encounter happened it really threw me off because yeah they were aggressive maybe a shoot up around off in the air they take off look for the other ones because there's always more and, and it wasn't it wasn't on this level of aggression. It, it wasn't a curiosity. It was not, I want you out of here. Uh, there was something in the air. Uh, get the chills thinking about it because it's well, like look, a prime. Hey, look, just, yeah, we'll, we'll get into all that. But all right. yeah, because because I want to start at the beginning. So why don't you just kind of walk us through that day and then we can go through because you're, you're I apologize. Probably experience. It's okay. You don't have to apologize for sure. Because I understand experiencing that range of, a range of emotions while you're recalling what happened to you. So yeah. and everyone, 90% uh, of the people watching this right now understand as well. So there's nothing to apologize for. But if you want to just kind of walk us through that day, 
prepping yeah, for sure you know your, your it demeanor, actually, and it then started, what happened right it started a, a few days before this because we were uh river miles it was about 247 river miles from dillingham up the nushigak river on a tributary called the Nuyakuk. so we were way up in the middle of bfa no nothing around um my older relative had planned a gold panning trip for the last two years before this. So he spent that time getting the prospecting sluice box it, uh, as portable as possible. He was in his late sixties at this time. And, uh, it was me, him and his son. And me and his son were the worker bees. We were going to get the pails of dirt, the pay dirt for him to sluice and potentially stake a claim. Um, <clears throat> It was in mid-September 2006. I, I know that because we left the day after my birthday, and my birthday is the 12th of September. So we left Dillingham on the 13th, and we stopped in a couple of places going up river, like New Stuyahawk. We have relatives there. Uh, talked to them about potentially getting a nice black bear rug that year because there was rumors of a seven footer up that way. So I, I had ulterior motive, you know, immediately as soon as I heard that, as far as shoveling dirt from my relative. But uh, so a few days travel because he would get cold traveling on the water up here in Alaska. It gets cold regardless of what the ambient temperature is. It doesn't matter. So we took those pit stops. We got up to a an old antiquated salmon counting tower station they're all automated now but this was made when uh they used to have people out there going up on a little tower and literally counting how many salmon they see swim by it, it's bristol bay it's the largest red salmon return in the world sockeye salmon it, it's the largest millions a year so <laughs> he had pre-planted a couple years and, and pick that spot through talking to other people or what have you. So we were loaded down for 10 days. We had, you know, food, hunting gear, um, guns, ammo, all the, uh, panning equipment and everything like that. And, uh, once we got there, it was, eh, it was a couple hours before it started getting dark this, that time of year, it's about a 12, 12 light cycle up here. <clears throat> So we unload and I was a little anxious. I wanted to potentially go scout for that black bear. But with the way it was just getting darker and by the time we were really ready, it would have been just not worth the time. So we were sticking around and a good couple hours had passed. Um, it, it, it had gone into getting pretty, pretty dark. Now, when you get in front of this little counting tower let me let me preface this, this real quick it's about a seven foot bank it's on a high cut bank that's eroded with the grass kind of hanging over the edge and a real weak trail up it at a little bit of an angle and then it's about 20 feet uh parallel with the river bank from that point because it's on a little bit of a cut so it's about 20 feet to the doorway of this shack it, and this this place is a glorified box it, literally it two by four framing eight foot square and it was only skinned on the outside with five eighths plywood it, this place was just a dried in spot for the observers to be there was a little drip oil stove um just when wind, you go in the, the door the door is located you, basically yeah and, and that's insulting a windbreak uh, <laughs> so the doors to the left hand side. So when you open it immediately inside, uh, you got some little hooks for your coat or whatever, but there's a little card table, an 18 by 24 inch window on this side. And a few feet that way is the other window, a small counter. And then the corner to your, uh, tight, right. When you come in the little room, basically, uh, is a little drip oil stove. And there was a rack for the oil drum out, side but there was no oil drum in it for the little drip stove so uh we got everything unloaded and there's a little 50s egg style shaped camper off the back of this thing they had cut off one end and then basically used lag bolts and their their uh macgyvering we'll call it uh skills to attach it to the back of this little shack and it was no window in the back it had been boarded up and there was two double bunks 
one on each side of this little entryway about dead center of the back wall of this little shack. So I had bought a brand new uh, 870 pump action shotgun, rifled barrel, ghost string sights, matte stainless finish. I, I wanted one of these for a while. It, no, it's not the most exotic, but I wanted a good rifled slug gun, you know, especially going out all the time into the into the deep woods. It's just a good, good gun to have usually. Um, so I'm adjusting the rear sight and we we're talking about potential places. He was uh, thinking about having us get this, these pay dirt samples for him to sluice the next day. And uh, as we we're all discussing everything, the whole place just creaks like real loud, just Bleh. well, look at each other. Like what the hell was that? Well, as I was saying that, and I was looking at my younger relative, because his chair, he had it, the, his back to that little 18 by 20 window on that side. And uh, I saw something dark move, uh, move from out of view of the window. I couldn't make out because of the shoulder. Well, we're on a salmon river, and it's at the end of the salmon run. So, you know, the initial air changed and everything, but when he stood up saying, Hey, that's not funny. I told him, well, there's something dark out there moving, you know? So we thought bear it, it nine out of 10 times. That's, you know, most of the time, 10 out of 10 times, it's just going to be a bear. Well, he grabs a 30 odd six. And I'm, as we're already talking about what we're doing, I'm loading up the shotgun and we had a million candle watt beam, a little spotlight, fresh six volt battery in it. Nice and bright, still virgin battery. So we made our game plan. I said, I'll, I'll push the door open. We, you know, I checked out the riverbank side of the window where I saw the movement to make sure it, the bear wasn't just right outside the door and we're walking out to this thing to just, you know, swipe us or whatever. There was nothing there. So I was like, I'll push the door open. We'll beam in front of us. And then we'll, you know, basically be tactical about running this bear off. <clears throat> Cause that time of year, coastal brown bears are humongous. Uh, just massive animals so we we were weary of that you know so i get the door open and i'm beaming there's nothing and i'm kind of holding a spotlight up underneath the barrel or, or the pump action of that shotgun and just kind of guiding like that and as i pan to the left about 50 yards is where the tree line starts and just as i started panning there's three sets of huge eye shine uh bright red it, it reminded me of fence post markers uh, imme uh, immediately like uh, me and him the something was totally off in the air immediately. It, it just, everything kind of, now we're, we're not new to this hairy man thing, but there was something about this that just, uh, it, it was eyes. beyond crazy. Red eyes is not normal. No, uh, we're used to some green eye shine from a bear. You know, it'll drop its head down, kind of look at you when it's at night. You know, wolves, they always drop their head when you beam them and then they kind of slink away. And But this, this, yeah, it was totally off. So we duck back in and, and this place is a glorified box. I, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, <coughs> talk it up, I guess, but it was really rinky dink. All it had was a little J hook and an eyelet to keep this door shut it, it just a horrible hiding place it really was so we're ducked in there and we're standing next to each other he's immediately on my left between me and where he was sitting at the card table and remember this is eight foot square and i'm kind of a little more adjusted to where the little drip oil stove i could literally reach out and touch it i could touch the counter uh, that other opposite window was about three feet away I'm small space so we're standing there talking next to each other like what the hell is that you know something very awful is going on here my uh, elder relative was in the cubby straight across just kind of he was already in his pajamas and stuff you know old timer he was ready to call it a night so he could get rich gold panning or whatever so uh as uh we get done it, it only moment not very long at all because all 
my elder relative had to do was take off his rain gear and he was in his pajamas. So being outside and then us talking, he had enough time to strip that gear off. And that's about the length of time. My younger relative, like, just drops under that table faster than I've ever seen anybody move. Like, it, it, it seemed like he was flung down there violently just fast wham he's gripping that 30 out six by the barrel because he was holding it in front of him holding on to the barrel when he saw what he saw he drops under there and he's he's hold got a death grip on the barrel and he's holding it like a paddle and me and my older relative are just kind of like taken aback like what the heck is you know what's wrong with you kind of thing and he was looking up and across with really big eyes at the opposite window. Now it's darker now. So we got the Coleman lantern going just above where that card table was hanging. So it was nice and bright in there. And as I look over, I saw a huge face in the window. Now this is 18 by 20. Uh, it's 18 by 24. And I saw from the bottom of its nose to just above its eyebrow in that 18 inch space, it, it was huge. They were like black glass marbles with red uh, eye shine. It, it was, it was surreal okay. in that mo moment. Yeah. Just beyond like, it was like an electrical shock immediately to your whole body to where, you know, every fiber of your being wants to run, but it's like stuck in your skin. It's like just, and it blinked and it started. And now once we shut that J hook, let, let me preface this. It, the pressure in the air was like we had earmuffs on. It was almost like it was hard to hear each other talking. And once I saw that and it blinked, and started moving this uh this primal thing came over to me like and it was like defend yourself defend yourself immediately uh, i get the chills thinking about just getting that feeling because it was like autopilot i, I was holding the shotgun offhanded and i just immediately boom 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 shot three times through the wall like i couldn't i couldn't control the the shooting at the time it was like autopilot you know, defend yourself. It, it, yeah. The feeling in the air was just like, I, I felt like food uh, is creepiest thing. I, I've never felt that before in my life, that, that deep primal, I, I've been startled and I've, you know, I've been intimidated and, and a little fearful, but this, this was primal. This was, I didn't even know I could be that scared, but it, it's situational. It never. <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. situational. You're stuck in a box with two other people that, out in the woods, and there's this big thing, this huge face. You have to know what it is immediately. When you oh, see yeah. It. yeah. Once I saw the eye shine, I wasn't saying it out loud, but it, I already knew. It It was just why, why is there three right there, and they're not trying to duck or blink or move out of that beam because it, it was a virgin – battery in that thing it was a beam it was a really good beam and uh so i shoot through the wall my elder relative ducks into the cubby he had mumbled something but i, I my whole focus was what the hell you know as soon as the gun firing stops there's a loud scream and the the whole place rattled. There was a pot on the little burner of our Coleman stove and it rang kind of like a phone used to back in the day at the end of the scream. And then the whole place shifted a couple feet and everything happened just real fast. It, from the point of looking over and seeing it firing scream shifting and all this, it, it, it was all like a goulash that happened in a second. And immediately it, something come over me like it's almost like I separated myself from my mind a second to go hey this is where it ends like you know this you're not going to see the other side of it it's kind of I've had time to look back on it and that's that's the closest explanation I can 
come up with because the terror was so much that I had to like step outside myself almost to beef myself up, even though I, I felt I was going into certain death was how it felt in that moment. It was like this paradigm shift of just terror and understanding and um, okay, I'm over it. Let's, you know, whatever yeah. it's going to be. It's almost uh, an acceptance that these are, these are your last moments or very well could be. Exactly. It, and it, it freed me in a way I was still, I didn't want to die, but, I wasn't trembling, shaking, uh, in that moment. Yeah. I was, uh, I was very focused and it, when that place shifted. No, we're not far from that river bank. I thought, Oh crap, you know, we're going in the river. Uh, I, that's what was going through my mind when the place shifted. And then it was just deafeningly quiet, like deafening. It, it seemed like, time was standing still because in those moments it, I, I was, I was still in a terrified state. Um, cause there, there was portions of that long period of quiet where everything is frame by frame, just like that little Coleman lantern. I didn't want the lights out. I, I, I put one of those little chairs in front of the door for, uh, I, for peace of mind, even though I knew it wasn't do not this whole place, nothing was going to do us any good. But so I scooted the chair over there. I put my back to the little cubby in the other chair, kind of sitting with the 12 gauge across my lap. Cause initially I wanted to get the 30 odd six to have more firepower, but he had a death grip on it. I, I, I didn't want to shoot him accidentally. Cause I, I was freaked out. Uh, like I said, we've had experiences where they've come in on us and intimidated and threw stuff, but it, this, this situation was not like the others. It, it was all this, uh, almost like an oppression of you're dead, you know, come out of there kind of, let me, let me continue. Otherwise I'm going to get caught up in the memory of it. But, um, so I'm sitting there and like I said, I, it's like frame by frame whenever I'd have to pump that stupid little white gas woman lantern. Oh, I hate those things. Uh, but I didn't want to lose light. So I would force myself and it's hanging over the, uh, I, I was so terrified. I couldn't just take it off the simple little hook and, and keep it closer to me. It, anyway, I, I, I really wasn't in my right mind in those moments. It, it was, it was surreal. Cause no one was talking to me. My, my elders, you know, in the bunk behind me, my, my younger relatives on the floor, he he's babbling. Um, he had actually wet himself and, and I, I wanted to do like him. I just wanted to go and lay down in the bunk, you know? And I thought about that a few times, just, eh, just go lay down. It'll, it'll work itself out. But I just fired shots, you know, uh, it's on it, I already, it, there's something in me new. It, this isn't done, but so I'm sitting there and I, I don't know how much time had passed. It, it had been probably hours. And during those moments, I, I just further resigned myself to, I, I was actually thinking in my mind, you know, are they going to get me right outside the door? Are they going to break this popsicle box, you know, and, and just snatch us out of here? Cause it, there was nothing stopping them nothing stopping them. And so I'm, I'm plotting in my head, you know, we saw the three sets of eye shine. There was a one in the window. Now I don't know if enough time had lapsed from when we shut that door for it, one of those to get over to the window. I, I don't think so. Cause it, it was all real fast and I know they're fast, but this, so as I'm sitting there just resigning myself to, what, however I'm going to die. I was thinking, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I save one round, not for myself. Screw that. I'm going out. Uh, but for one, one gets close enough to where I can shove it in the mouth or eye socket or whatever. Uh, someone's coming with me. I'll go, but you know, someone's coming. Yeah. So a as I'm playing all these scenarios in my mind, uh, I'm, I'm gripping that shotgun so hard. My hands are hurting. So I have to force myself to let go of it a second and then grab back a hold of it. 
I mean, white knuckle. I didn't even realize it until my hands started aching so bad I could barely feel them. Then I'd shake them loose again. But uh, eventually my younger relative starts talking and I'm, you know, I'm getting his attention. I'm like, hey, are you really with me, dude? You're freaking out. Calm down. I just shot at this thing. I, I think they're going to leave us alone. I was trying to encourage him. Uh, I needed help. I needed someone else to, to like, Hey, verify it. Am I losing my mind? <laughs> you know, what's happening here? What, what's going on? <sighs> so I, he gets up, he's starting to act more like himself. Uh, I, how much time had passed? I don't know. Cause it, it, it's all a, a jumble of pumping the lamp, gripping the shotgun, trying to get him talking. So it, it's kind of, portions of it are still a little jarbled in my memory as far as uh chronological sequence right so we're talking and and you know i'm telling him calm down and i told him what i saw and why i started shooting uh you know a big face in the window eyes big boom 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 you know i was like what'd you see and he was like well it was further away from the window and showed its teeth at him and then came in closer to the window once he was out of view. And he looked at it again once it came up to the window and started looking in at us. And then that's when I turned, saw it, started shooting. So it showed him his teeth. He said they were big, block teeth, uh, had eye teeth like us, but more pronounced. Not not fangs by any means, but just more pronounced. Uh he could probably still draw you a perfect picture of those teeth today. This was 15 plus years ago. So we're, we're our confidence is building because we, we still feel that pressure, but there's nothing actively like trying to terrify us. So we're getting our game plan, but it's like, it's pitch black out that, that river. We don't know. There's big rocks in there. There's deadfall trees. There, there's all sorts of hazards. The last thing you want to be is in a river in Alaska ever, not even for fun. It, it's, it's cold. It, it's bitter cold. So we're, we're deciding, okay, well, it's quiet. We're, we're going to wait till daylight. And, you know, I'm already, uh, I got ammo ready on the little table. I, my pockets are full. Um, I, I just, uh, in that moment, I still didn't feel we were going to make it. I felt like this plan to get to the skiff is pointless, but it, it was a morale booster. We got a goal we're working towards. So stick with me. Let's stay on this. Cause I mean, he was really terrified. I was really worried him staying with me, you know, like in, with me, not just in Babel land or whatever. So, he says, we got the spotlight. Let's, let's see if there's anything out there after uh, I couldn't tell you how much time it passed when he brought up spotlighting out the light outside was, had the slightest tinge of change to it. So we knew we were moving towards morning time because this, this whole time it is like a time warp between when it shoved the shack and till when we, uh, decided to spotlight out the windows. I, all those hours are still in my mind, this jarble of uh, how I'm going to die. I hope I get one on my way out the door, so to speak. Uh, just all sorts of things. So we beam out on the, the riverbank side, and there's, there's nothing. We sweep it real good because you know, we're hyper paranoid at this time. We go to the other window, and uh, when I initially turned on the beam, it, it was still uh, with the lamp behind us, right where it was reflecting in the window was causing a, a mirrored effect, so we couldn't see that good. So we killed that Coleman lantern, and then I beamed from where we saw, roughly saw the three sets of eyes shine. And I'm panning back, and there's nothing, no movement, and, and it's definitely quiet it, the pressure in the air is still there and as i swung back there's a an outhouse about 40 feet off the back kind of kitty corner offset from the back corner of the little shack there 
and uh, it's eight foot tall, eight and a half foot tall, roughly. It, it was made with minimal cuts to the wood, but it was at least eight foot tall because I had been out to it earlier just to see what condition it was in when we got there. But uh, when I beamed over there, there was a huge black silhouette behind it. Um, not immediately behind it, but back just a little bit from it. And this thing was so black. It wasn't my, the beam wasn't registering. Like I, I kept looking and looking to try to figure out what it was. Cause it was so big and just pitch black, but it, it was every bit of five and a half foot wide, 13, 14 foot tall. It, okay. it was cartoon big, like hulking big. Ah, uh, ah, uh, it, it absorbed the light. That's, that just still is just one of the creepiest things. Heard that many times. Uh, so, Heard that many times where the light doesn't reflect off the hair. It's almost like it's absorbing the light. Exactly. And that just makes perfect like, sense to me. Big nothing. <laughs> the feeling in the air was like that big nothing was there for us. Uh, so the beam went off immediately as soon as that thing started moving. Uh, beam was off. We were all tucked back into that little cubby. And we're terrified. We got barrels crossed. We're, we're not making sense. I was on the border of just losing it 100%. <sighs> so I'm calming down because it's still quiet. That after seeing that thing, there's not a sound. Uh, it's still dead quiet. Can't hear movement. This thing was huge. I, I, I wouldn't even want to guess its size. I, I saw no... Uh, it looked hulking, but there was no there wasn't enough definition to give it depth and, and be able to judge how thick it was front to back, but it, humongous. So after some time goes by, I, I don't know how, how much time exactly. Uh, Cause we, we were in a fit of terror there for, I, I don't know how long it couldn't have been horribly long because as I said a minute ago, it was starting to change. The, the light outside was starting to change, not, getting light yet but alaska dark is kind of different I it, it may be like that other places but dark is pitch black and then you know you got levels to it anyway so as we're sitting there we're, we're gaining confidence in the quiet calming down a little bit getting our nerves together and i'm thankful he hasn't lost it on me <laughs> but as soon as i'm thinking that he's he was talking about this little 16 penny nail we'd been kicking around the floor of this dump since we got there. And he was talking about nailing the door shut with it. And I was like, stay with me. Stay with me. I, I can't ha think about what you're saying. That nail isn't stopping nothing, N nothing. So uh, I get him back. He's like, no, no, you're right. You're right. I said, we got to, we got to make it to that skip. We definitely, we want no parts of whatever that is. We we got to go. It, oh, Whew. so uh, we're again uh, trying to figure out. Okay, the skiff's just right down off the bank. We're not far from that skiff. It, it's just right there, like twenty five feet is you know if you throw a rock. So we're we're strategizing. You know, should we go now? Should we wait a little bit when it gets, you know, where we can see? And as we're talking, we still, we haven't come out of this cubby yet. We're still, we're still back there, but we're talking big. Okay. So it, it sounds like rotor wash in the near distance, like a helicopter coming, just boom, 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 boom. And then we're feeling it in the ground at the same time. And one of these things bolts past that window that the one was staring in on the tree line side huh but as soon as it ran by it, it was almost like they're staged around us where we couldn't see them because a whole bunch of running was going on around this place uh there was noises happening with this but i i, I couldn't pinpoint oh it, it was screaming like a this or it was doing a that thing however during one of those while they were rushing around i 
it sounded like one of them was smelling the outside of that little camper truck, that camper trailer, like, like a muskian crawl. Uh, I can't express how freaking creepy that is, man. Uh, I laugh so I don't cry. I'm telling you, it was. Uh, uh, I felt like food. It wasn't a natural feeling for me. I'm a, I'm an alpha predator. I'm Alaskan man. I've killed everything out here. You know what I mean? Not to brag. I'm just, I, jeez. Uh, so. This is going on, obviously, is white knuckle terror again. All, all our confidence is zapped. Uh, it would, it, it almost sounded like they would run around for a, a few moments and then back off and then start another round of it. And this went on for, it felt like 10, 15 minutes, but we weren't in our right minds. We, we were not. So it, it could have been longer that finally stops and it and there's that deafening quiet again but there's this this pressure that's like i don't know it was weird it it felt like they're trying to flush us out of there uh i i felt like we we're being toyed with because they were so massive there's there's no way they couldn't have just <laughs> smashed this place down and had their way with us i i don't know why they didn't that because still guns is. are guns. Whether whether those guns would have killed them or not, they still that's gonna hurt. And a thirty alt six, you know, that'll take down a bear. Why wouldn't it oh, take yeah. down one of these? Yeah. It, yeah. Look, so to me, and I'm not not to break this up and stop everything, but to me, and just just to, because I understand, I get this, and to convey what you're feeling, it's such a broad because you run the gambit of emotion angry uh, to extreme terror and it's just it's up and down you, you're catching these waves because you know what out what is out there is smart enough to be waiting for you possibly yeah. and yeah, i think that's, have, that's the deal that's the yeah, whole thing have, is you not you're not just going to die no one's going to know what happened to you you're just yeah gonna be gone. yeah oh they didn't come uh, back from the gold planning trip you know yeah. but uh it's alaska yeah, it happens every day. So that that terror is calming down, and you know that feeling's going on. And I've kicked my quarterback in for this escape into high gear. I'm like, you know, we it's getting lighter. We need to be on business to go. I I, I ain't got nothing for this. It, it, we I just knew we had to go, but just not when they wanted us to. I I, I just kept feeling like they're trying to flush us out so as i'm talking to him it dawns on me that there's this bow line <laughs> it's like 50 70 foot long and there's 10 foot of chain off the bow and we had drugged this dang thing up over the river bank and, and shoved it in the tundra like we buried it in the tundra we didn't want that skiff getting away well <laughs> so we're tied off and i wasn't going to damn near that tree line to go retrieve that, you know, $300 anchor. I didn't care. So I was getting the game plan. My younger relative was going to go in front of me. He would take my shotgun and I would have the 30 odd six to keep uh, a better guard of us covers back that type of thing. And as we're, we're discussing this and, uh, sound like someone started shooting a pellet gun at the side of this place. Tack. It was loud as hell. And after a couple, just the cadence was kind of tack, tack. And then it was a hailstorm. Uh, so that goes on very briefly. It, it, it was just like a quick squall of, of hail. I, I, being curious i was trying to figure out what the hell is that I, I knew it was something being thrown but what you know what the hell is that i peeked out that that same side where i had shot at it through the wall and saw a bunch of little rocks on the ground so immediately i was like damn i didn't even think they would be throwing rocks you know it it, it changed we didn't know what we were going to do obviously they're they're still there they're still they're still doing stuff to try to instigate a reaction from us. Ugh. So I knew in my heart of hearts still, 
at this point, like this, this ain't going to go well. We're just going to walk out into a, a, a lunch line, basically. Either way, I wasn't going to not. I was going to at least make the go and, you know, well, see what happened. But <sighs> blood pressure goes up. It, it is very still it, very vivid in my my memory. And it was a little over 15 years ago. So every it, it hadn't been maybe 35, 40 minutes since the rock throwing stopped. And it, it's light enough. I can easily see that tree line now very, very clearly. And I don't see any movement. I'm, I'm checking the bank side. And we just have to get down to the river and we're good. We, we, it's only a 40 horse, but now it's a very light skip. All the gears in this little shack. So we got our game plan. I hand him my pocket knife to cut the rope when he jumps into the skiff before he starts it up. Um, and I was going to help my relative because it's a pretty steep bank there. I wanted to help him get down. But so we, we get this game plan together and I'm double checking ammo, uh, reminding my elder to get any valuables because I ain't coming back. You know, I, I ain't loading nothing. We're going us, the guns, the ammo and whatever you can carry. That's important. There, there was no arguments from me, either one of them. None of us wanted no part of that. So we got our game plan. We stack up on each other and we moved real quickly. We, the door opened. I'm right behind him. We're step for step. It, it was like we had, done this every day of our lives literally we were moving do 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 we get to the edge of the bank he jumps down i turn my older relative comes around the bank side and i kneel down now this is an eroded bank and the grass is hanging over it and this is early in the morning so there's moisture all over this it, it wasn't like it was when we got there so i'm leaned over helping him get his footing as soon as he's got his footing i scoop back and i stand up back to full height and just as i get to full height uh, a rock this little bigger than a basketball whizzed past my face and immediately i'm locked onto it it impacts the water the river and and it impacted so loudly and so hard that the water didn't close over it before it struck bottom and echoed out like a shotgun blast. Kablam! So everything's slow motion. And immediately I, my eyes are in the direction that rock came from. And I got that 30 odd six and this has open sights. Now I am, I'm scared at this point for sure. I don't want to die, but I've accepted that that's what's happening. So understand when I point this gun at the big black shadow coming out of the tree line, I, I was dead steady. I had my beat on it, calm. My breathing was fine. Uh, as it, I could tell it was fully out of the tree line. And now this is all microseconds. Understand. I put three shots on it center mass. Uh, I've never worked a bolt action that fast and smoothly in my life i probably couldn't do it again but it was it, it sounded like a semi-auto uh, i was the most proficient guy that day with that bolt action boom 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 and this thing it stopped moving forward but it didn't flinch it, i couldn't make out features it was pitch black still it was lighter outside but when you're near a canopy of any kind in Alaska and that kind of light, it's all black behind it. Yeah. You can see some of the green of the trees, but the, the trees behind it is black. And it's only thing you could see is it's blacker there and it's moving. So, you know, there, there was other movement that I saw happening at this point, but that's the one I was shooting. It, 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 it was there and it wasn't running in between the trees like the other movement I saw. Oh. So I shoot the three times and my blood pressure gets jacked when I tell this. It, it, 
So I make my shots. I know I hit it. It's it stopped moving forward, and I'm immediately down the bank. Well, my, my younger relative did not cut that bow line. Um, so I get to the bottom there, and my elder relative is still trying to gingerly get in the skiff as I yell at my younger relative. He had the skiff started, but he had it idled really high. I said, idle down so you can shift. Give me the knife. Give me my knife. He throws my knife, and he's turning to idle down. Now, this is all happening real fast. I cut the bow line. I'm putting the, the chain in, and I noticed my elder is still gingerly trying. I, I shoved him in. I, I felt bad later, but in the moment, you know, you got to get in there. So I shove him in, and I had noticed my shotgun laying on the beach. For whatever reason, my younger relative had threw it down on the beach when he got down to the skiff. I don't know if he was still just, I never got an answer from that. Why he just threw it down. My new shot. Anyway, I, I digress. So I'm getting the chain in. He gets it shifted when it idles down. Uh, and my older relative had shifted himself and was looking back behind me because he basically plunked in and started turning around. Like I said, this all happened real fast. As I'm getting the chain and I'm looking back at my younger uh, relative, you know, to I, I just had to make sure he was getting it shifted, basically. I, I Anyway, so as I'm doing that, I notice his eyes get real big, and so does my elder relatives, and my elder relative kind of falls back in the skiff, looking up at the bank above me, behind, uh, behind me. So I, I'm, as I'm pushing off, I turn and I look up, and it's the big the big pitch black one. But when I was out of the glance and seeing its hulking size, uh, when I started focusing, all I made it to was its shin because I, I don't know why, but I noticed it had little cinnamon red, amber colored tips to its hair. Like why didn't that anyway, uh, it was just something that stood out in that moment. I, I locked on its shin and I noticed that because it was light enough to, to see that you know when just a moment ago it was pitch black unless it was a I, it was as big as the one i just shot so i'm not assuming it's another one god i i'd hate to think there's more than just those ones but <clears throat> there are i push on yeah i i know it's just ah uh, i i hope no one has to Anyway, so I, I push off. We we kind of put her out of there. And I hadn't talked to my relatives in 15 years. Uh, the other night when I got off the phone with you talking to you, I had reached out to my younger cousin just to see if he would talk to me because th this whole experience killed our relationship, me, him, and his dad. I grew up. I, I love these people. These are my family. I love them, you know. So I called him up and he answered me. He accepted the call. And I, I told him, you know, hey, I've been thinking a lot about that. He goes, I, I do all the time too, but I just can't, I can't deal with it. I said, well, hey, look, is, is there, you know, I, I gave him a quick rundown of what I remembered. I said, is there anything that I'm, I'm missing in this? And he said, no, you know, he said, yeah. You know, everything went as, you know, I viewed it, but just from his perspective under the table and so on. But one thing he told me was as we were puttering out of there and I was in the bow of the skiff, I, w I was reloading at 30-06. I was looking for the 220 grain rounds because I only had 180 grain uh, soft tip core locks. Obviously, that wasn't enough. So I wanted something, you know, a little heavier round at least. Um, but he said during that, those moments uh there was like four or five rocks that were thrown at the outboard when we we're going out of there and i, I knew nothing about it because once we got away from there um it was almost like the the elephant in the room we didn't talk about it immediately uh it was it was just that thing it, no one it was so terrifying no one wanted to really talk about it so when he he told me that it, it just kind of reiterated my initial feeling that they were there for us 
they just didn't want us gone. It, because unbeknownst to me, and this was just revealed to me two nights ago after I talked to Carrie on the phone. Once I talked to him, my younger relative, uh, that the rock throwing thing at the outboard was going on. I was oblivious in those moments. I was, I, I was still in a fog of terror. You know, I, I couldn't. I was so. I was feeling so fortunate when You're we still were still not out of the woods. No pun intended. No. Yeah. No. Literally, we have a couple hundred miles to go. But I'm not in that damn shack, not knowing what's going on around me, you know. Yeah. So that that happened while I was reloading and, and it was basically quiet from that point until we got down to Kaliganik. We anchored out in the river um, and we sat there for a little bit, just pulling ourselves together because we needed to get more fuel from Kaliganik. We didn't want to um, stop in New Stuyahawk. We wanted to just get as far off that river as possible so and that that's what happened on that that whole trip there well the thing is years later it's still such a confusing and kind of complicating kind of feeling or or kind of notion you don't really know how to feel i know how you feel when you're talking about it but it's affected your life too. That's why this is the reason we do this. It is encounters like yours. while we do this, while people need to be aware that these creatures are out there. Personally, I don't know how you made it out since you shot several times, the rock going by your head. I just, I just get the feeling that he could have hit you if he wanted to. Well, I had scooted back from the edge of the bank before I stood up. Now, that rock had to have been already in, in motion. So it was anticipating me standing up where I was. So you got I scooted back. Yeah. Oh, I had scooted back just a little bit because it, it felt like the way my uh, foot was dug in the ground, I was going to push myself forward. My knee was going to slip off that edge. So, I, you know, I felt myself kind of lurching forward a little bit. That's why I scooted back before I stood up. So... Uh, it, it, I feel it was literally trying to take me out. You know, I was the only one that had shot during, during the whole thing. I shot and then I shot again once we came outside. So, uh, how a many lot of, of them do you think there were total? I think there were five. I think wow. there was the three at the tree line. That one that I shot at through the wall. I think that one was trying to uh, figure out how many were there. So it made noise on this side, distracted us. We kind of went out the door. I don't know how long it was looking in that other window, you know, because once we went out that door, that, that side was blind to us. We, Cause we were off to the left-hand side and we had about five foot, maybe at the most to that corner before it wrapped around back towards that window. So, I'm assuming because of how everything played out, it made the motion where I saw its movement behind my younger relative out of the view of the window, went around to the opposite side and we went out, checked, saw the eye shine, came back in, saw it after he flopped on the ground. And then I fired. And honestly, I think another factor in it was I immediately, I didn't hesitate. When I was shooting, it was autopilot. Boom, boom, boom. I, I opened up that I didn't even think, oh, I better shoot. It it just it I started shooting. It it was Do you think you hit I'm it? not uh, I hope so. I, I mean <laughs> not, not trying to not trying to sound no, like I hear a jerk, you. but it was evident that they weren't there for curiosity's sake. The I felt these things when it was a curious thing or when they were uh, annoyed trying to throw rocks and scare you out of there kind of thing. Cause they'll shake bushes and, and make all sorts of weird noises. Um, and that's typically what I've seen when they want you to leave. Cause typically you get far enough away from that area. All, all that stuff stops. You may see it peak from a tree line here or there, but it's not a, it's not a continued thing. It, they're not just constantly, proactively trying to flush you out 
So do you, it, do you think that having the guns, maybe them knowing you have these guns saved you? Uh, honestly, yeah, because I immediately started shooting. And uh, I mean, anyone smart would be able to tell you, well, they're going to shoot immediately because that's what happened. You know, so I think that changed their initial approach to us. I, right. It's easy. It's easy to speculate with 2020 hindsight. But a, as yeah. I look back, at it, I, it seemed like the one was trying to get a reaction out of us and the others were waiting to see that reaction to then make their move. I, well, when you hear this, this. Don't, 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 don't come in real quick. Like it's like it's a helicopter or something and it just runs by that to me yeah. is almost like a test to see if you're, you know, if you're getting yeah, shoot you're again shoot. or just yeah. testing you. Yeah, exactly. And, and see, that's why I felt like they were toying with us a little bit, but I also felt that they wanted us out in the open so they, they could see where the gunshots were coming from, yeah. you know, cause I, when I saw that in the window, um, when I initially looked, it was looking down at my younger relative. And once my head fully turned, because my eyes turned before my head, and as my head fully came over, then it looked up at me, and uh, its brow just crunched down, and it had this look of, oh, you you know, like you imagine someone that hated your ever-loving guts and was there to murder you, like, oh, there you are. I got you, you know you're done kind of look. And, and it was that, uh, that along with the air, the energy was just dark. It, the energy was that like death warmed over. It, it's. It, I can tell you what got me the, the very so, first thing, uh, that gave me the chills was imagining because I used to have a Coleman lantern. It's the white gas lantern. And when you pump yeah. it up, it's bright white. It's not yeah. putting out some dim little light. It's lighting everything up. So I could imagine yeah. being in that and you can hear it because it's it's mm -hmm. kind of hissing a little bit. Yep. Hearing oh, that, yeah. no other right. sound, standing there in the freezing cold with this windows there. And, you know, they got to be able to see in with that light and you can't see out very oh. well. Yeah. And honestly, I really got me. wasn't trying to stare out those windows. I really wasn't. I... I, I was death gripping that shotgun because um, I didn't want to see out the window because I knew if I saw something, I'm shooting again. Like, And I really didn't want to shoot. I, well, just to me, just imagining that, that clinical light, you know, that bright, very, uh, you know, not a very flattering light, but just a bright light in this room and just being cold and standing there. And I mean, that, that kind of yeah. gave me that feeling, just imagining being there and, and knowing that, uh, that you went through that. That's, uh, there's a lot of yeah. people that have gone through, by the way, I talked to a lot of people that oh, have yeah. gone through similar things that'll never come on a show and talk about it. So we definitely appreciate you doing this. <clears throat> Can you, uh, Will you do me a favor? Will you come back Friday night? Yeah. Because I want to get in. I, I want to discuss uh, a little bit more with you, with uh, with Brad on the late show. I didn't have anybody booked. So it's uh, it's two hours later when we start. It's 9 Central, so it'll be five, four, five, six, right? 6 o'clock. Yeah, six, your yeah. Time, if you will. Yeah, definitely. Not a problem. Awesome. Uh, the only Appreciate time it. this bothers me is like when I relive it in my mind. Other than that, I'm, you know, I'm your average guy. I still go hunting. It, it hasn't ruined my life, but it's, it's torn apart me and a, a piece of my family. And absolutely, I, I want other people to be aware that, that they're not just friendly. They're not just going to. Uh, react a certain way because you heard someone else said yeah. they were nice and liked the apple, you know? Uh, well, there's just, just, seems to be just like, it seems to be just like people. They're just different from one another. And maybe, maybe there's a, a murderous family of those things. And maybe that was them. Uh, I mean, well, I you said 13 so feet, 
I'm, I'm not yeah, questioning no. your, your measuring ability because you've probably seen bear that are close to that tall, but that's yeah. 13 oh, yeah. feet. Yeah, but it was it was wide and just oh. hulking. It had no definition, but it was hulking. It, you could just tell it was just a, this massive, just nothingness at the time. Uh, yeah, the and I'm well. Like that can hide is, is in Alaska. Yeah, Daniela, did you have anything before we roll out of here? Well, it's just the you know seeing how it still affects you. Yeah. Uh, you, you know that that is really compelling to to see that and and terrifying to know even after 15 years while you're recounting that I can feel the the shock of it still and the the memory really really hits you you, you know and and like you say people need to know don't they I mean this is just what an incredibly terrifying encounter uh, that not everyone gets to experience but it, it's out these things are out there and obviously. Um, you know, I just just find it incredible that that you've got you've gone through that. Not that I don't believe it, but that these this experience happened. Mm. You, you know, I want to take people back to that shack and and hey, let's go. But you know, I don't think people really really want to experience anything like that. Like I, I understand the curiosity, definitely, I get it because wow, you know, Bigfoot, but. Uh, there, there's a side to it that's uh, just yeah. yeah. Well, Fred, okay. we've come to the end of our hour. We'll we'll yeah. have a lot more time Friday night for sure. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, telling us your experience. Uh, anybody else, if you've had an experience, you want to come on talk about it, you can email us at yourbfstory at gmail dot com. Email us at bigfootodyssey at gmail dot com. You can check out our website bigfootodyssey dot us. And uh, don't forget to join Daniela on Hidden Existence. Go to the community tab and you can send uh, Daniela an email if you want to be a part of the Encounter Hub, uh, which is it's not going to be a show that's presented to the public. It's just it's for you guys that don't want to come on camera, but still need someone to talk about your experience. So uh, that's just I think that's going to be an awesome deal. Check out the links in the description once again for my Patriot Supply. I think everyone nowadays needs to have an emergency food supply that's why we've been pushing it so much here lately it's just something to think about uh is that <clears throat> and leave a comment that'll help the show more than anything uh is if you leave a comment and hit that thumbs up if you like the show hit the thumbs up we appreciate you but join us back here friday night for the late show at nine o'clock p.m central fred's gonna be here with me and brad and we're gonna kind of dig in a little bit more to this uh to what happened so fred we appreciate you and thank you for coming back also thanks everyone for joining us and we hope to see you guys then all right, all right. good night